Hi, today we're going to be learning about solving equations by inspection. Now this is actually something that we've already talked about or we've already done in some of our lessons before now, but now we're going to be doing it a little bit more formally. We're going to be doing a few more examples and different types of equations as well. So first of all, we need to identify or establish what an equation actually is. Okay, when you talk about an equation, it is where you have a mathematical statement that says that one expression is equal to another expression. So it could be something like this. 2x plus 3 equals 5x minus 6. So over here, I've got my one expression. And here I've got my other expression. And I'm saying that those two are equal to each other. Okay, so here's my equal sign. And this equal sign is what makes it an equation. It is equating the two. It's saying that this is equal to that. Okay, now when we solve an equation, we are going to be finding the value of the variable. Now, it's often will be x, but it wouldn't always be x, depends on what the equation has. Sometimes your equation might have an a or a b or whatever in. So you're going to solve for whatever that variable is, and you're going to find what value of that variable satisfies the equation. Or in other words, what value of that variable will make the equation true. So if I say x is 1, then is this equation true? If I say x is 1, then this is 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Here I've got 5 times 1, because what x is still 1, 5 times 1 is 5, minus 6 is negative 1. So 5 is not equal to negative 1. So x can't be equal to 1 in this equation, because it, then this is not true. Then that equal sign doesn't work, okay? So when we are solving an equation, we are trying to find the value of the variable that makes the equation true, makes the statement that we have over here with the equal sign true. Okay, so we talk about finding the variable, the value of the variable that satisfies the equation. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example. So in this equation, we have got 2x plus 3 equal to 15. And we need to solve for x. Now, at the moment, we're going to be focusing on solving by inspection. We are still going to learn about methods that we use, strategies that we use to solve equations. But at this point, we're just going to be solving by inspection. That means that we're going to just be looking at it and trying to find out what value of x will, will satisfy this equation. When we get onto more complicated equations, then we can't really use the inspection method. So we're just going to be introducing the concept of equations at the moment by using inspection, but we are going to go on to more complicated ones where we're going to be actually needing to use actual methods to work it out. Okay, so at the moment, I want to know what the value of x is that will make this whole statement true. Okay, so 2 times something plus 3 must give me 15. So now, we did equations similar to this when we were working in our pattern section. So I want to know what this must be. So 2 times something plus 3 equals 15. What was it before I added the 3? That would have been 12 before I added 3. So 2 times what gives me 12? Okay, 2 times 6 gives me 12. So therefore x must be equal to 6. Okay, so now when once you anytime you have solved an equation, you can always check your work. You can check if your solution is correct by finding out does it make the statement true? So to compare the left-hand side to the right-hand side by using that value of x that we just found, we can see if they do come out and equal the same thing, then we know that we are correct. Okay, so our left-hand side, I'm going to use substitution with the value of x that I just worked out to substitute in and find out what I get for the left hand side with that value of x. So 2 times 6 plus 3 without that equals 12 plus 3 equals 15. So my left hand side of my equation is 15 and my right hand side of my equation is 15. So now I know that my left hand side is in fact equal to my right hand side if x is 6. So therefore, I know that my solution is correct. Okay, now you don't have to show 
this checking all the time. This is just something that you can do anytime you're unsure if you've got the correct answer, you can check yourself. And it's a good idea when you're starting off with equations to get used to checking yourself just to make sure you're on the right track. So as we are doing equations now for the for the first time, it's a good idea to kind of be checking yourself um, and just check if you are doing the, the, the solving correctly. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these questions. I want to see if you can solve each of these equations by inspection. Okay, so let's go through those questions. So the first one we had was three plus a equals eight. So three plus something must give me eight. What can I add to three to get eight? I can add five to three to get eight. That means that a is equal to five. So in this one, we were solving for a. Okay, question B, we've got five x equals 40. Five times what must give me 40? 5 times 8 is equal to 40. So that means that x is equal to 8. The next one, I've got 16 equals b minus 7. So what can I subtract 7 from to get 16? That means I have to start off with something that's higher than 16 by 7. So b must be equal to 23. 23 minus 7 is 16. The next one was a bit more tricky. Here I've got 17 equals 13 minus x. Now in this one, I'm starting off over here with a smaller number than I'm going to end up with, and I'm supposed to be subtracting from it. Now normally when you subtract, your number is going to get smaller. So 13 minus something should give me a smaller number than 13 instead of a bigger number. The only way that this can happen is if I'm subtracting a negative number which actually means I'm going to end up adding. Remember, if you subtract a negative number, it means that you add. Okay, so 13 minus a negative number. So x must be negative. Okay, so 13 minus negative what? I need to go from 13 to 17, I need to add 4. So that means I need to subtract negative 4. So x must be negative 4 in that one. And then the last one, question C, or question E, we're solving for C, negative 42 equals 6C. Now we need to know what can I multiply 6 by to get negative 42. So again, if I'm going to get a negative answer over here, I have, to sub I have to multiply by a negative. If I have a positive, I have to times by a negative to get a negative. So C must be negative, and then 42 
if I want to get 42, I must multiply 6 by 7. So 6 times negative 7 will give me negative 42. Now remember, you can check all of these. So if I wanted to check them, I would say left-hand side is 3 plus 5, and that gives me 8, which is the same as my right-hand side. Okay, over here, my left-hand side is 5 times 8, which is 40. My right-hand side was also 40. Okay, this one over here, my left-hand side is 16, and my right-hand side is 23 minus 7, which is 16. So they are equal. For D, my left-hand side is 17, and my right-hand side is 13 minus negative 4, which is the same as 13 plus 4, which is 17, which is the same as that. And then the last one, negative 42, uh, negative 42 is my left-hand side, and my right-hand side is 6 times negative 7, which is negative 42. So I can check all of them and I can see, yes, if I have that value of A, those are equal. If I have this value of X, those are equal. If I have this value of B, those are equal. If I have uh, this value of X, then those are equal. And finally, if I have this value of, of C, then those are equal. So I can check myself and I can see, yes, I have got these all correct. Okay, so now you're going to do the last two questions in this practice activity. Now these ones have got fractions. Now remember, a fraction line means division. Okay, so this means 21 divided by something must give you 3. And here, something divided by 4 must give you negative 5. So I'm going to give you one minute to work on these two questions. Okay, so let's go through those two questions. So for the first one, we had 21 divided by x equals 3. So 21 divided by what can give me 3? What do I need to divide 21 by to get 3? I need to divide 21 by 7 to get 3. So therefore, x must be equal to 7. And then this one over here, something, z, divided by 4 must give me negative 5. So now, in order for me to get a negative answer when I'm dividing by a positive number, I have to have started with a negative number. So z has to be negative. Okay. Now, negative what divided by 4 will give me negative 5. Negative 20 divided by 4 gives me negative 5. Okay. So now I know that z is negative 20. And again, you can check these. You can see, okay, so my left-hand side is 21 divided by 3, or 7, sorry, that's the, the x value I got there, 7, which is 3, and my right-hand side is equal to 3. So I can see, okay, those are correct. Okay, those are equal, which means that this is the correct answer, the correct solution. Then this one over here, my left-hand side, I've got z is negative 20 divided by 4, which gives me negative 20 divided by a positive is negative 20 divided by 4 is 5 okay so negative 5 and my right hand side is negative 5 so my left hand side and my right hand side are equal for that value of z okay now we're going to go on to a different kind of equation now in these equations over here we have got 
exponents okay and some of them like in this one over here the exponent itself is x now this is what we call an a an exponential equation okay these ones over here are not called exponential equations these ones these ones over here are quadratic equations this is a cubic equation okay but all of them are dealing with exponents which is something we haven't had in any of our equations before so we're going to go and work out each of these and see how they differ from each other and there are a couple of things that I need to point out to you as well okay so for the first one we've got 2 to the power of x equals 16 Okay, so now we have learned about exponents. We know that an exponent means that a number is being multiplied by itself that many times. Okay, so this exponent over here, whatever this is, means that 2 is being multiplied together that many times, whatever this needs to be. So how many times do I need to multiply 2 together to get 16? Okay, 2 to the power of what is 16? 2 times 2 is 4, so that's already two twos times another two is eight times another two is 16. So there are four twos that I multiply together to get 16. So two to the power of four is 16. That means that X is equal to four. Now, if you already know your exponents, the ones that I told you you should know earlier in the year, then this will be much easier for you. You won't have to work it out every single time. Okay, so it does help. And I'm going to go through the ones that you, you need to know after we've done these examples but it does help if you know your exponents because it'll help you to be able to do these more quickly without having to work them out every single time okay the next one we've got is x to the power of three equals negative eight so now in this one the base is my unknown that is my x over there my exponent i know what it is it's cubed so something cubed must give me negative eight okay so now you should already recognize that eight is the same as two cubed okay so if I just had x cubed equals 8, I would be able to say x is 2, okay? But now, if I just say x is 2 and I cube 2, what am I going to get? I'm going to get positive 8 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So how do I get the negative 8? Now remember, when we are working with a, an odd exponent, then it will end up with an, a negative number if it started off as a negative number base so my base has to be negative so x is negative 2 and negative 2 cubed is negative 8 negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8 when you have an odd exponent over here a cubed uh, variable as your unknown then you can end up with an equal to a negative number like this because you can multiply a negative an odd number of times and end up with a negative answer. Okay, now let's have a look at the next one. x to the power of 2 equals 4. Okay, now this is an interesting one because your first instinct is probably to say x is equal to 2. Okay, because 2 squared is 4 and that's correct. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. However, it's not complete. Because there's another number that I can square to get 4. I can also square negative 2 and I can get 4. Because remember, when we multiply a negative by a negative, we get a positive answer. Okay, so this is actually positive or negative 2. And this is how we write it. Plus or minus means that it can be either one, positive or negative 2. So x is equal to positive 2, but x can also be equal to negative 2 because if I have positive 2 squared I will get 4 but if I have negative 2 squared I will also get 4 because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 so if you have got an x value that is raised to an even exponent you have to be careful about this it doesn't happen with odd exponents because with odd exponents remember an odd a, a negative raised to an odd exponent will be negative and a positive raised to an odd exponent will be positive you can't get a positive answer from a negative number that's been raised to an odd exponent because it will give you a negative answer okay but with an even exponent it's not like that with an even exponent you can start off with a negative number or a positive number and either way you'll answer you'll end up with a, a positive answer 
Okay, so when you have an even exponent like this, then you have to be careful when you're solving an equation that you need to put both of those answers down, both of the possibilities. Okay, so you need to be very careful about that. And then the last one we're going to do is x squared equals negative 4. So now we know that if I have x squared equal to positive 4, I can have my solutions are either positive or negative 2. But what happens if x squared is equal to negative 4? Now this is saying that I can square something and I can end up with a negative answer. Now that is not possible. I can't square something and get a, a negative answer. Not with real numbers. Okay. So that means that there is no real solution. Now I don't know if you remember when we were doing our squares and our square roots and our, uh, that section, we learned that if you try and take the square root of a negative answer or of, of a negative number, then we said that it is non-real or imaginary. So over here, if I try to find the square root, which is what the base would be over here, the square root of that, then I'm trying to find the square root of a negative number, which is non-real or imaginary. So there is no real solution to this answer so or to this equation. So if you get an equation like this, that is what you're going to write down. There is no real solution. So I said that I would show you some of the powers that it's good for you to know for when you're doing exponential equations that will help you when you're doing exponential equations. So let's go through some of these powers over here. Now, this looks like a lot to have to learn off by heart. Now, the, the good thing is you don't actually have to learn off, all of them off by heart. So let's have a look at it like this. So all of the green ones, you can see, they are all to the power of zero. Now, remember we learned when we did the exponential laws that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. Now, when you're doing exponential equations, then you're going to sometimes have to use that knowledge to be able to solve for an exponent. If you know a base with an unknown exponent equals one, it doesn't matter what the base is, that exponent has to be equal to zero because any base to the power of zero is equal to one. Then we have all of the blue ones over here. They are all powers of 1. Now you can see that any time you have something to the power of 1, it stays the same. And that again is a, a rule that you can use when you are doing exponential equations. If you have a base to the power of an unknown exponent equal to the same number as the base, then you know that, that exponent has to be 1. Then we've got the ones that I've highlighted in yellow. These ones are ones that I do recommend that you try and learn because they will be helpful. The tens over here, you don't really have to learn as such because the exponent tells you how many zeros they have to be. Okay, so that's just an idea of some of the powers that will be helpful for you if you know them for when you're doing exponential equations. Okay, so now you're going to do two questions yourself over here, and I'm going to give you one minute to try and solve these two equations. Okay, so let's see what you got for those two equations. So the first one, we had x cubed equals 1,000. We need to find out what x is. So something to the power of 3, something I need to be able to cube to get 1,000. I can cube 10 and get 1,000. That means that x is equal to 10. Now remember, because it's an odd exponent, I'm not going to put in the plus and the minus. I put in the plus minus if it is an even exponent. Okay, so it's just x equals 10. Then the next one, we've got 2 to the power of x equals 32. So 2 to the power of what will give me 32? 2 to the power of 5. Now we did go through that. That was one of the ones that we had over here. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Okay, so if you know that, 
you don't have to work it out okay so if you know that then you could write straight away over here that x is equal to 5 okay 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 5 and if you worked it out you would have got um, 32 as well okay so that is how we work with equations where we're solving them by inspection now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.